Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some scroll saw work and some router work for the cross section. The idea we're going to cut all this out, all these shedding sections will all be removed, so leaving plenty of twirls and twists. A nice solid cross in the middle, and then we'll route that section out, lower it down a little bit, and then we'll fill that in with some coloured resin as we go along. You notice with the wood, it's all recycled. This one was literally a door, so it's full of holes. There's bits of plastic chunks, holes everywhere. But we'll uh, use recycle when we can. So we'll just, we'll just suit, we'll just move this to fit, shall we say. And the idea, we've got to get the template on there first. For me, if it had completely routed out, I would have used carbon paper and drawn around this. Because we're going to do a lot of scroll saw work, this is the only section we're going to route out. So we'll sort that out as we go along. So I'm going to put this builder's tape. We'll literally line all the base of that. And that's just so that paper comes off easier when it's down to peeling it off and the sanding stage. So we'll cover with the painter's tape. And then we'll just spray on some glue. And literally stick that to it. On there like so. And then we'll drill what they call pilot holes in every section we're going to remove so that's all those shaded areas so obviously we'll need one in there one in there one in there and so on that's going to be the tightest area because four or five different cuts in there once you drill all, all the way through this will allow us to feed our scroll saw blade through attach it to the saw and we can start cutting this one out we'll get this ready first and then we'll talk more about what blade we're going to use Right, you can see from that, we've had our blue tape on, we've stuck our template down, we've drilled all our pilot holes in every section. You've got to do it this way, there's no other way of doing it. Now the blades, today I'm going to use a spiral blade. It's not ideal for this project, but it's just something I'm getting used to, so I want to just test myself more than do a fantastic job, if you know what I mean. Straight blades would be ideal for this. The simplest one for mine are these pin blades. They're called pin blades because they have pins at both ends. And they just lock onto your scroll saw, top and bottom, once you've fed it through your project, remember. Now, for these pin blades, you would need bigger holes. Now, you'll be okay on these bigger sections, but when you come to these smaller ones, you might just struggle to get an hole big enough drilled in there to feed that blade through. So for on this occasion, they use what are called straight blades, but they are pinless. So there's no pins on them at all. So ideally, you can have a lot smaller hole to feed them through. They only cut at the front, as same as the pin blades. They are identical, apart from the missing pin on that one. Spiral blades, which are really thin like this, they can cut from any angle. So once I've fed that through there, and put it onto these brackets unfortunately that I have to use you can go up down left right center whichever you're happy with on these pin blades the blade is just at the front so if you imagine coming down we've got that fed through one of our holes and you're coming down here you're cutting away nicely then you would have to turn your wood all the way to cut round there and then turn it again to cut up there or start from the top and work down. Whereas once the spiral blades are fed in, you can literally just go up, down, left, right, like so. So I'll stick with the spiral blades for now. They're not ideal for straight lines, but practice, practice makes perfect. Right, let's get this set up on the saw and we'll start cutting this one out. Once we get to the router section, we'll talk about our router bits. 
taken out the centre of the cross. Right, you can see from that, we've fed our blade through. Got the little twang of the blade, move that bit of wood. So you know you've got the right tension there. That's the sound you want to be listening for. We've got it onto our clamps. Unfortunately, my old strapper saw, I have to use these adapter clamps for pinless blades. So we'll cut this section out, remove it, put it into the next hole, and so on, and so on, and so on. Always start with your middle cuts. I know you'll be tempted to go around the outside first, but then you're just making things a little bit weaker. So start your harder cuts in the middle while you've got all this surround to keep it in place. Right, we've made it all the way around. We've not lost anything yet. This little piece here, that's just very flimsy for me. I can see that disappearing. If not, I'm even tempted just to cut it off there and just have that running down because everything else seems to be pretty firm. But you're going to lose that. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that one for now and see how we get on. What I've done, I've saved these pieces because when we come to route out this middle section, and what, I, what I've done for that is literally just remove the template, like so. I place my carbon paper underneath, which I always use. Put that down and literally just draw around it, like so. And that's left with the design on there. And that section we're going to route out, remember. Rooting all around these curls, so them curls will be slightly higher. And then we'll fill all this in with resin. We don't need to go too deep. The deeper you go, the more resin you're going to use. Obviously on the original cutout, this would have been scroll sword and that would have been cut out completely. But we're just doing something a bit different. On a quick note, this circle here, I added that myself. Because that was just a bit too flimsy. This one was further down there. And I've actually raised it up just to bring it together. But I'm not too comfortable with that one to be honest. And also, while we're on this top one, I broke that off yesterday. I've got to be honest with you. Nothing to do with the cutting. I'd already finished, took it indoors, and had it stuck against the wall. And I grabbed it like that to pick it up, and we snapped it off. But we have glued it back on again. But that's another one. So we might remove this, and we might remove that. We'll see how we get on. What we do now is just remove all the paper, get it all cleaned up. And then we'll start routing out this middle section. We'll talk about the bits in a minute. What I've done is save these outer bits just so we can feed them all back in there. Just to secure it up a bit. He says if you can get it on, like so. And that will just keep things together. And if you wanted to, you could put some tape on there or put a strap around it. Just keep it all in place. But Yes, I do have issues about this one here. Okay, we'll clean this up slightly and then we'll start routing out the middle section. Right, we've removed all the paper. I think it's cleaned up for now. We'll do a lot more sanding to go yet before we get the end of this project. We put all our surround back in again. That's literally so the base of the router. Mine's quite small on mine. And that's going to give it just some more room to work on without damaging these curls here. So we put them back in place 
just as a temporary framework. Right, so the idea now is to remove all the centre of this cross, go on either side of our little twirly lines here, a couple of mil, we don't want to go down too deep, go in too deep, we're going to use more resin as previously, previously said. Right, the bits I'm going to use for me as always, if I can find one, are these little CNC bits, the light little needles, same size as Dremel, they will fit a Dremel if you're using one of those router Dremel attachments. But for the big router, you need what they call a collet. That's simply a little tube like that, 6.35 millimeter collet, to slide in your 3.175 millimeter shaft. And that'll fit straight in there like that. And that will now fit into your router, no problem, and we're good to go. Once we've gone around all our lines, just to make a separation from that piece to that piece, we will then put on some what I call mill end bits. These come in various sizes. Nice flat bottom, nice sides. And we'll pop one of those on just for removing this at a quicker pace. I don't want to go in too big. These are quite narrow. And I think if you're coming with a big chunky router bit, you're going to lose them straight away. So it's a bit delicate operation. So we'll just take our time to this one. Let's pop this CNC bit into the router and we'll start doing the line work on this. can see from that we've gone all the way around with our little CNC bit to be honest I think that one was a bit worn doesn't matter how rough it looks this is the better one we need we're gonna put one of these mill hen bits on now they come in various sizes we've set our little what I call depth charger which is over here so we can put this in the same collet as before so just a case of removing the CNC bit Sliding in our mill end bit, same size, remember, this will also fit the Dremel. Pop that in the router and we'll set it to that depth over there. So we know that's right. And then we'll start removing all these sections, leaving the little twirly lines in between. And because we've got the right depth, as we come up to either side of this line, this should all pop off, leaving hopefully that bit in the centre. Right, we've routed out the middle section of our cross. We've gone down either side of your little squiggly lines here. And so far, we haven't lost anything, but let's not speak too soon. Now it's just a case of general sanding up, and a lot of sanding. I don't know if I'm going to get away with using the Dremel on this one. It's just a little bit too fragile for me. So we have all these bits to get round here to sort out. Just get that one out of there. Okay, you can see the general shape we're going for. Still not too sure about this one. Very flimsy is that one. 
So that's our sheep. Now we'll get the sander. What I'll do is skim over the top first with the framework back on. And then I'll just get paper like so and just roll it up into little tubes and do a general sanding down like that. I do have some small files, but we'll just play with it. Just general tidy up and then we'll go to our resin and fill this crossing. You could actually leave it like that, to be honest. Put some nice stain on. But I've got the resin, so I'm going to use it. Right, let's just general tidy up first. Right, I've gone around the best I can. Enough sanding for me. It's not one of my favourite things to do. Literally now, I'm just going to throw some linseed oil on, boiled linseed oil, just to darken that wood down a little bit. You could put stainer on here, dyes, whatever, you know, whatever you're happy with. I'm just going to throw this on, like so, and just darken it down a bit. Not forgetting all our sides, or down there. See how that's darkening up. I'll go over all this now, finish this off, and then once it's dried off, we're just going to pour a little bit of resin in the middle here, just to break that up slightly. Right, that's nicely dry now. We've come indoors, everything's still intact. So what we're going to do now is put some resin in the centre of this, just to finish it off. Like I said previously, you could leave it like that if you wanted to and just put some stain in there. There's plenty of colours to go out. One time I was going to put different ones in each one, but it's just getting a little bit too much is this one. So I've gone for red, so we're going to drop some red in the complete cross just to fill that in. The resin I'm going to use is an amazing clear cast. I love this stuff. It comes in two parts, A and B, like so. There's your B and there's your A. And it's just a simple case of getting two plastic beakers like this. So much of A, just mark off how much you need. I'm going to guess at half an inch. And then half an inch of B. Mix the two together. We'll drop in a couple of droplets of red. And then literally just fill this in. Run over the top with a lighter just to get rid of the air bubbles. And then we'll put it to one side and we'll see what it looks like. I'll mix this off camera and come back when this is all done and ready to pop into our cross. Right, we've mixed our resin up. Two or three minutes, good mixing on that. Always have your gloves on, obviously. Now it's just a case of dropping our red in. I hope there's enough in this one. Two or three drops, it doesn't take a lot. Oh, there you go. That's a little bit over one or two drops by empty that, so it's had a good squeeze. But as you can see, it doesn't need a lot. And that lovely red soon comes through. If it looks a bit watery, the colour's maybe not too strong, you can always add a little bit more. I'm actually going to put a bit more in that one because it looks a bit uh, pinkified. So we'll drop a bit more in. Don't be afraid to add it. And it's about empty, this one, to be honest. Here we, well, there we go. We're in now. Looks like I'm ready for some more coloured dyes. All from eBay, Amazon. And that's it. That's ready for putting in now. So it's just a case of pouring it into our little sections. Get a little cocktail stick. And just to help feed it about. Plus these little plastic spoons, party spoons, they do have a nice lip on the end like that to help you along. Okay, let's start throwing this in. I'd rather put a little bit in each section, then there's no chance of us running out. Now 
Okay, you get the general idea. I'll fill this all up. Help it along like that. And then we'll come back when we're ready to put our lighter over the top. Right, we've gone over that. We've filled it in nicely. Just turn it on its side, might be better for you. So all we need to do now is just go over that with a lighter. And all that's going to do is help release any little bubbles that are hanging around inside that resin. Bubbles that are formed while you're mixing. So just skim over the top. You won't see it on there, but if you look really close, you can actually see the bubbles dispersing with the heat from the lighter. And that's it, basically. I'll go over this again a couple of times in a couple of minutes, just to make sure we've got them all. So all we need to do now is put this to one side, and we'll come back tomorrow and see what it's set like. Right, it's the next day. That's all nicely set. It's nice and solid, is that? And that's this little project finished. It's not been an easy one, to be honest. Remember, we broke that. I lost four blades on the saw. The scroll saw table became loose. Uh, <laughs> I went in and picked this up before it was set. I don't know if you can see it. Put a great big thumb print in the bottom of there. Literally just got away with that. It's hard to see. And for the first time ever, I've actually got a bit of resin bleeding into the wood there. And that's a first for me. But I've not used this wood before. This is just recycled unit that I picked up. But it doesn't matter. You get the general idea. The curves have come out nice and it's still in one piece. That's the main thing. These are just fun projects for me just to test myself and push myself out of my comfort zone. So there we have it. 16 inch by 8.5 inch roughly. Of a nice scroll saw and routed out cross with a resin inlay. Thank you very much for watching.